then it's my privilege and my honor to welcome Cherie this morning as she brings us the word and she's going to speak on the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. So, welcome Cherie. So why is that? 
The answer is found in the following verse. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22 and 23. Therefore tongues, that's tongues for a sign, are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But then he goes on later to say, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak in tongues, this is tongues for interpretation, mm -hmm. and there comes in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will they not say that they are all mad and out of their mind? So he says on one hand that tongues are for a sign, but then on the other hand he says that if you all speak in tongues, then the unbelievers are going to say you're mad and out of your mind. Now, if we don't understand the four different tongues that are talked about in the Bible, yeah. we're going to read that and go, he's just contradicted himself. Tongues are for a sign for unbelievers, but then if unbelievers are going to say that we're mad and out of our mind. But he doesn't contradict himself. The first one he's talking about is a tongue for a sign. The second one he's talking about is a tongue for interpretation. <coughs> but if you, uh, you know, go back to that Go back to the French teacher. For him, the tongue was a sign. But if everyone in that room had been speaking in tongues for interpretation, he would have walked in and would have thought that everyone was crazy and out of their mind. So those are the two public tongues. Now, along with this tongue, Paul writes about in the book of 1 Corinthians is the gift of interpreting tongues. This is a gift that very few, if any of the people I have ever met, have had. It's very rare. We read in 1 Corinthians 14, 27, Paul writes that if people speak in tongues in public places, that there must also be an interpretation. A person with the gift of interpreting tongues is someone who can understand what a tongue speaker is saying, even though he does not know the language that is being spoken. This lack of prior knowledge of a language is what distinguishes the spiritual gift from the natural gift of being able to understand and speak varieties of languages. The tongues interpreter would hear the tongue speaker and then communicate the message to anyone present. One of the problems in the Church of Corinth was that the tongue speakers were speaking out in the service, exercising the gift of tongues with no interpreter and no one present who spoke the language. The result was that the tongue speaker was commanding attention, but his words were meaningless mm -hmm. since no one understood him. So Paul strongly advised that all use of tongues in the church must be interpreted. He says in 1 Corinthians 14, 19, In the church I would rather speak five intelligible words of instruct rather than 10,000 words in a tongue. Mm -hmm. There was no benefit to the church members in hearing something they could not understand. That's right. Exercising the gift of tongues in church simply for the sake of showing everyone that they had the gift of tongues was conceited and unprofitable. So Paul told them that if two or three tongue speakers wanted to speak in a meeting, then a spiritually gifted tongues interpreter must be present. In fact, he even goes on to say, if there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet. It is a gift used to edify the body of God and to glorify him. So some people ask the question, how can you know if someone is speaking in a public tongue for interpretation or just speaking publicly in tongues? This is the way that I look at it. Hi Gladys, how's it going? <laughs> it's good. You having a good day? Yeah. I just spoke publicly to Gladys. Yeah. It was a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but yes, we're all around. But it wasn't a public conversation. I was speaking directly to her. But now, I'm speaking to all of you. That's right. That's the difference. I had a private conversation in public, and now I'm having a public conversation. So now I'm going to go on to the third tongue. Tongues for personal prayer. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14 and 15, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray. Listen to the word pray there. Not speak out to a congregation, but pray. I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with understanding. That's English for most of us. Yeah. I will sing with the Spirit, but I will also sing with understanding. Mm -hmm. What Paul was doing in those verses 
is identifying tongues as a prayer language. He talks about it in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, where he says, who, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. So the, other, so the two public tongues we are talking to God, so in the two public tongues, we are not talking to God, we are talking to men. But when someone speaks out in tongues which is interpreted, they are speaking God's message to us. When the disciples on the day of Pentecost spoke in tongues for a sign, they were speaking to those people, the wonderful works of God. But Paul was now saying that when you speak in tongues or sing in tongues, you don't speak to men, you speak to God. There is tongues for a prayer language. And when we want to speak one of the true public tongues, we are speaking to unbelievers or to the church. But when we pray in tongues, we speak to God. Now listen to what Jude says. Jude 20. But you, beloved, building yourself up, your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. That's why every believer, I reckon, should pray in tongues. It builds us up. But I'm going to make a statement there. People, including myself, have asked the question, is the evidence that I've been filled with the Spirit that I can pray in tongues? Let me say this to you this morning. A person can be filled with the Spirit and not pray in tongues. That's right. Why? Because they're not yielded to it. I can walk into a river and stand against the flow because, and, and not get swept away because I'm not yielded to that river. But when I let go and I follow that river, I'm yielded. I, take, I, I go wherever it leads. I will say this, though. Every believer that has been filled with the Spirit has the ability to pray in tongues. Yep. It's just maybe you haven't stepped out yet. Maybe you haven't yielded to that river. So to make this clear, you can be filled with the Spirit and not speak in tongues. My own personal experience was very much like that. I never doubted that I had received the Holy Spirit. He'd give me prophetic words for people. I'd laid hands on the sick and seen them recover. But up until a few months ago, I never spoke in tongues. It was like it was there, but I couldn't access it. I just hadn't turned that tap on yet. So now we're going to look at tongues for intercession. This is our fourth one. And it is also a private tongue. Romans 8, 26 and 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints in accordance with the will of God. So here Paul was talking about tongues for intercession. We might not know what's going on with our family down the road. We might not know what's going on with our neighbours or with our workmates or friends. But the Holy Spirit does. So we can make intercession by yielding ourselves to him. We can pray for them, not knowing what their need is. I heard recently of a story of a lady who stayed, started praying in tongues, and she just got a feeling she was praying for an elderly gentleman. She didn't know what for, she just knew she was praying for an elderly gentleman. And the next day at work, found out that her workmate's father, was our uh, grandfather, sorry, was in a car crash. Wow. She'd been praying for him, not knowing what was happening around that time. So many people believe that tongues have passed away or isn't for all believers. But in 1 Corinthians 14, 5, hear the heart of God. He says, I wish you all spoke with tongues. Some say that's just Paul writing. But remember, all scripture is God-breathed. That's, right. that's the cry of God's heart, that all would speak in tongues. Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be ignorant. So I want to challenge you guys this week. Is speaking in tongues is something that you've struggled with? If it's a question that, you are, that you've been asking, go to him, ask him, seek him out on it. He says that if we desire the gifts, that he will give them to us. He will not withhold any good gift from us. Mm -hmm. There isn't a magical formula to be able to pray in tongues. I'm sure they would have sold it on the market. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, 
It's just, it's not there. Yeah. But go home and seek out those scriptures and just seek the Holy Spirit. It's a relationship with him. It's not just, it's not just an ability that you're given. It's a relationship you're given. Yeah. A connection right. with the Holy Spirit and with God that far exceeds anything we can do in our own you know, fleshly people. So, I'm actually, it's a very short message, that's about it, but um, we're actually going to open up the floor. If speaking in tongues is something that you would like to be able to do, if it's something you would like prayer for, we'd love to pray for you, because it's not just for one person, it's for everyone. That's right. And we don't want you to go home with that. I mean, I know the difference that it has made in my life, being able to pray in tongues. So, I ask. Gladie and Henry and Heidi, if there's um, anyone would like prayer, please come forward.